Yeah, I spent a little bit of time with um, Marcelo besides the data collection, also on the documentation part. Um, otherwise, I did something uh, with uh, Vagrant and Docker. Um, first of all, I uh, spent a little bit of time with the Vagrant. Uh, with the vacant boxes um, because uh, we have a really nice build infrastructure and I would really like to uh, leverage from all that work which is in our build system right now um, for every feature um, which is in or every branch we have in Bamboo um, it will be completely compiled, tested and we also create the Debian and RPM packages out of it and that is really a nice uh, possibility to get features tested by users. And I would like to really leverage from this value we have in Bamboo right now. And uh, for this reason I started uh, recently um, a Vagrant project, which basically does every time you run a Vagrant app, uh, I use um, a Chef Cookbook um, to install several releases from OpenMS from the repositories. And um, that is basically uh, how you install um, OpenMS by yourself, just uh, through a, a Chef cookbook. Um, the problem with that is it's really, um, really time consuming and you have to download a lot of stuff because you have all the time installing and downloading OpenMS and ins doing all the install procedure. And I found recently um, the guys from Vagrant, a company called HashiCorp, provides a website where you can host Vagrant boxes online. So uh, the cool thing about it is uh, you go to this website and you can say um, discover Vagrant boxes and you, as you see there are already a few boxes there. So and now you can do a search for an OpenMS Vagrant box and there are currently um, is one box available. I don't know why it shows twice. It's just one repository but it's really early I think. <laughs> from this point of view. And, and uh, what I've uh, provided here is a completely installed Vagrant box. So the only thing you have to do is just really download the base image and uh, start the box. Um, I can do that here in this thing. If you just uh, run the, the init, it creates the Vagrant file. And the Vagrant file is really, really simple. All it has on top of it is uh, the name of the repository and the, the release, how it is uploaded. And uh, what you have to add is uh, the port forwarding. So you have to forward port uh, 9880 and uh, run a Vagrant up and it will download the complete image with OpenMS pre-installed and starts it. So you don't have to go all the time through the process to install everything. And the idea would be having for um, stable release or develop release the vacuum box already uploaded and provided to that to that possibility. Yes, it initializes a whole box where you can uh, run OpenMS. It's already it's done. Yeah, it's. It's not running, it's really just installed. Okay. And uh, how I did it, it I can ex that is the GitHub repository to build this, uh, uh, this base box image. So what, I, uh, what you can uh, use is uh, they provide also another tool called Packer. Uh, Packer is to uh, bootstrap uh, a whole distribution and installing OpenMS in, in that in distribution. That is kind of uh, the idea. Uh, currently we have uh, two versions, one is CentOS 7.1 and Ubuntu 14.04. If you look at the Ubuntu 14.04 thing, we have um, basically um, a JSON file which describes how to build the, the base box image. It's really downloading the Ubuntu ISO, uh, ISO file and uh, making up get update, doing installing all that stuff, and then on top when the operating system is installed, run the chef cookbook and install OpenMS. And then it creates an, uh, a, a base box file which is uploaded to um, the web page. And that runs completely, um, you can run that completely on the CLI level. So I integrated it in a Jenkins just for testing. So uh, I check out this uh, repository and I can run that completely um, 
driven by the development process. So every time maybe Bamboo is completely uh, finished um, a feature branch build, it can start uh, triggering this, um, this build process and builds the image and uploads it somewhere and then you can directly download it without doing anything. And um, I tweaked it a little bit that you have a parameter for the release. So you can say um, this build job builds the stable release and I, then I can say uh, branch uh, feature heat map for example regarding what the repository or what the repository path is and it builds it up basically um, yeah that is uh, basically um, yeah we have two possibilities um, currently um, we can it depends on the on this um, uh, what you uh, use uh, for the Packer build. We have uh, Ubuntu 14.04 and CentOS 7.01 right now. So that's basically... So you can, you you can have both. Yeah, right. exactly. It depends what kind of... Uh, if we run the command in here, then we basically bootstrap uh, CentOS 7.01 and let the chef cookbook run on the CentOS release. And then we have a CentOS box, right? Um, yeah, that's basically uh, the stuff uh, I've worked um, to get yeah new features or getting um, yeah new stuff uh, to people for testing things like that. And otherwise, I spent a little bit uh, with uh, Jesse together um, on doing the similar thing uh, using the Docker stuff, uh, which is already really hyped right now. I think. Um, what I used, um, just to uh, give you an, um, an idea, I use uh, KiteMedic, that's a UI for, um, for Docker, uh, because I run on macOS X, so I can, can't run uh, a Linux container on my system, so if you download this um, application, it will do everything, um, download a boot to Docker, a virtual box image, and gives you the whole environment to play with Docker. It does everything for you. And um, what they also have, uh, they have the Docker Hub repository, so you can re register Docker images uh, online. And what we basically did, we just uh, built um, a Docker image and tried to upload it to uh, the, the Docker Hub repository. And um, what we figured out uh, in Docker, you run, uh, it's kind of, you have an environment just for process. Uh, we rely on the Postgres database so what you need, you need a separate uh, Docker container which runs the Postgres database. And uh, for this reason, we use the vanilla Postgres um, database. So um, Postgres provided also a Docker container image, um, so you can run that and uh, use it. And how it basically works, if you have, uh, ha have the booted Docker image running, uh, first uh, you start um, a Docker run, that's the name of the the image here becomes the OpenMS database. Uh, we pass a password in, so I set a Postgres admin password uh, into the Postgres database, and it starts it basically in background. Um, we have basically a Postgres uh, APS uh, command for the running Docker images, and basically it says here it's an it's up and provides port 432. So that's the, the database is now running. And uh, for the OpenMS one, you have to link uh, the OpenMS uh, image to the database. Uh, you, we provide also the, the ad administration password because that is used in the OpenMS data source XML file. And we use, uh, you that, that is the repository from um, the Docker Hub. So if we don't have it locally, it goes to Docker Hub, looks for the repository, and pulls the image. And then it basically starts all that stuff. Um, we run in a few little tricky things. Um, and um, so uh, I think uh, Ben started already uh, using uh, Docker for um, in the build process. So we have now possibility to run OpenMS in foreground mode. That is one uh, thing you need 
uh, when you uh, dockerize OpenMS. And uh, what we also had to do is uh, we have to, um, because we have to bootstrap the database, so we uh, created a little script. That's the reason why you see the, the install this command running. That is always running before OpenMS is started because it's initialized also the database. So. Right. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and basically, um, the stuff lives uh, currently. Um, we have the OpenMS Forge repo, and uh, there's also uh, the Docker file which creates the image, which is already uploaded to to Docker Hub, so you can even create it by your own. So if you, uh, this is the Docker file that's basically installing everything what you need to get OpenMS running. Um, and we have also which pause we have to expose and um, this is the bootstrap uh, script which runs the the OpenMS process um, that is a similar thing I haven't tried that yet it's really just getting it somehow running I yeah so I think uh, could be an idea to maybe having trap D separate Somehow, I don't know. If you have event D and you can link a trap T container to the event D, so you have a separate. You still have to do it, right? right, yeah. Could be a possibility. I think it's uh, like the, the three headed monkey setup, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, more um, sophisticated. Yeah. And then it's just more right, yeah. So, would you envisage using this for? If we got into a more complex installation where we had uh, Cassandra and Logstash, Ex exactly. and whatever, right, you yeah. would use this mechanism to set that environment yeah. up. Right. Maybe repeat a bit of the question mm -hmm. in the stream. Um, yeah, we use that uh, also to um, have more complex uh, setups, like uh, we have the Grafana web UI, for example, which we have to install um, separately. Mm -hmm. Uh, we can use exactly this mechanism, having a Docker container just for the Grafana U web UI and just link it to the OpenMS uh, REST API and then you can build that environment. And uh, on top of it you have uh, Docker provides also a project called Docker Composer to don't have to do that all stuff manually, what I did. Uh, so basically you can compose the whole system in one um, kind of a JAML file where you say I need this image, it exposes these ports mm -hmm. and it's more like the the overall uh, orchestration file kind of thing which does that. I ran in a few issues right now that's uh, the la latest status uh, to passing environment va variables in it so that does, doesn't work right now so we have to figure out what, what the problem is. Yeah, so that's pretty much it. Any questions? Yes, yeah. That is uh, also an um, additional step we have to go through to provide even the database the same thing. A database maybe... Yeah. Right. Right, yes. That's persisted. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you.